Hello, in this video, we will study the nutritive needs of fungi. What do fungi do in order to stay alive? What are the conditions? What are the factors that favor normal growth of the fungi? At the beginning, let's recognize the objective of this lesson. At the end of the lesson, students will be able to define fungi, to explain the meaning of fungi, or and to recognize how fungi obtain their nutrition. How do they take their nutritive materials from where they take it? Finally, at the end of the lesson, we will know the nutritive needs of fungi. What are the needs of fungi to grow normal? Let's study uh, the beginning. What are fungi? Fungi, they are non-chlorophyllic organisms. They grow on decomposing plant and animal matter. Non-chlorophyllic organisms, it means that they don't have a chlorophyll and so they don't make photosynthesis, okay? This is the first information we can get it from the term chlorophyllic organisms. So how do they get their own food? Fungi, they are heterotrophs. Heterotrophs mean they cannot make their own organic food. They cannot make their food just like the chlorophyllic plants and uh, just like the uh, green plants, they don't make photosynthesis. They appear in the form of ramifying filaments constituting mycelia of various colors. If you look at this picture, this is an orange fruit. The difference between them, this is a normal one, while this, this green color, it's for, it refers to the growth of fungi on the orange fruit. So this green color is the fourth of fungi. That's why we say that they grow on the decomposing plant matter on an organic matter, which is in this case the plant. Here, the organic matter is the bread. This color, the brownish or greenish color, it's for the fungi. If we look at this fungi under the microscope to see its shape, it will appear as branches. That's why we say that it makes mycelia. Mycelia, it means different branches that grow in order to fix themselves on the uh, organic matter they are growing on and so to stay alive. Let's start with the first experiment, which is to uh, study the nutritive needs of the plant. So the objective of this experiment is to study the needs of fungi. What do they need to grow and develop? We brought five petri dish, which is a culture area where uh, we uh, can uh, put uh, fungi in it and let them grow. In the first dish, we put fungus and water. In the second one, we add sugar to the water. In the third one, we put only fungus and mineral salts. In the fourth one, we put fungus, mineral salts, and water. In the last one, we put water, mineral salts, and sugar. Sugar, in this case, this is the organic matter uh, that uh, we will see if a fungus need it or not. The results, they were as following a few days later. In A, nothing happened. There was no growth when we put only water. In B, there is a little bit of development for and growth of the fungus. In C, we don't have any growth. In D, also, we don't have any growth. And in E, we have a complete growth for the uh, fungus. That means we can conclude that the needs of the fungi are water, organic matter, and mineral salts. So if I have all of them, that means I can assure the development of the fungus. So the three needs are they need water, but if it is alone, it will not grow. They need sugar, which is the organic matter. If it is uh, present, if it is available, I have a little bit of growth, but the one that will favor a complete and normal growth is the presence of the three needs water, sugar, and mineral salts. Continue. The second one, let's study the factors of the medium. Where fungi grow? What do we have in the surrounding? What do we have in their place? Let's start with the first experiment. In the first experiment, we cultured the fungus with water, sugar, and mineral salts. We put, we uh, add we added all the needs, all the nutritive needs of the fungi. And also in the uh, F, we 
cover the petri dish while in g we didn't cover it so the variable factor here is the presence of the cover or you can say the presence of the uh, humidity which is more correct because we cover it when we cover something that means evaporation will happen releasing water vapor in the surrounding which make the uh, humidity of the place while in g when we didn't cover it no humidity so let's study in the presence of the humidity which is the variable factor what happened to the fungi and in the absence of the humidity what happened in f when we have humidity because the dish was covered i have complete and normal and perfect growth for the fungi why on uh, g uh, on petri dish of g i have a small uh, growth for the fungus that means the favorable factor to have a perfect growth is the presence of humidity this uh, favors the perfect growth of fungi now we continued with the conditions the favorable condition in h we put fungi in a petri dish and we add to it water sugar and mineral salts and we uh, add light to it in i we have the same condition fungus grow under the same condition but in the absence of light so that means the variable factor here is the light the presence of light in h we have light in i we have light if we analyze this document we can see that in h and in i in the presence and in the absence of light the fungus grew perfectly and that means the light is not an indispensable factor for the growth of fungi okay so here the objective was to study uh, the importance of light so at the end we conclude that light is not important fungus they can grow in darkness as uh, the same uh, as they can uh, grow in light and also in this uh, experiment when we studied the importance uh, of uh, humidity we concluded that humidity favors a perfect growth for the fungus so till now we concluded that the nutritive needs of the fungi are water sugar and mineral source i must have organic matter for the fungus to grow the factors how the conditions are humidity favors the growth of the fungi there is uh, no uh, importance for light they can grow in dark and in light let's see finally uh, the last factor of the medium which is the temperature let's see which is the most uh, favorable temperature that uh, allow a perfect growth for the fungi the table here it shows the variation of the duration of white bread fungus development as a function of temperature so we have a bread and on the bread uh, a fungus is uh, growing and we put pieces of uh, bread uh, fungus in different temperature at a three temperature at 9 13 15 20 25 32 35 and 40 degrees celsius and then here is the number of days in which the fungus grow for example in a three there was no uh, growth i'm analyzing now the table at nine temp uh, when the temperature is nine the fungus uh, grows in nine days at 13 degree the fungus uh, grew in five days at 15 the fungus grew in four days at 20 the fungus grew in three days at 25 the fungus grew in only two days at 32 the fungus uh, grew in three days and on 35 uh, degrees celsius the fungus grew in five days finally at the high temperature which is 40 there was no growth of the fungus so we can conclude that when the temperature is 35 is sorry 25 there was a rapid fungal development it grow it grew only in two days okay 
Why? When the temperature was nine, there was a slow fungal development, slow because it took nine days to grow. When the temperature is three and 40, yani at a very low temperature, which is so-called temperature, and a very high temperature, which is hot 40, the fungus did not grow at all since the conditions are not favorable, either too cold or too hot. Okay, so here, I'm, I'm just saying uh, at the last point, the conclusion, why the fungus didn't grow at a three and at 40, because the conditions, they are not favorable, either because they are too cold, it's a three, so the fungus uh, do not, uh, the fungus does not grow in cold, or it's too hot, so it does not grow in too hot temperature. So from this experiment, we can conclude that the favorable temperature for the growth uh, of the fungus is 25. This is the optimal temperature. It's not too cold. It's not too hot. It's a medium temperature because the fungus here, uh, I'm explaining why the fungus grow in two days only at 25 because this is the optimal temperature, this is the favorable temperature of it. So we can conclude that the optimal temperature, or uh, another factor that favors the normal growth of the fungus is the temperature that it must be 25, not too cold and not too hot. This is uh, what we can conclude about the factors of the medium of the fungi. So fungi grow in humidity, fungi uh, grow in optimal temperature equal to 25, and also light is not indispensable factor for the growth of the fungi. The nutritive needs of the fungi, they are the uh, water, salt, mineral salts, and the presence of organic matter, which is the sugar. These are the nutritive needs of the organisms that do not make their own food as the fungi.